shaking. Wow. I think we need to get under the desk. All right, we're going to go to break. Uh, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. We'll be right this. back. Wow. An unprecedented disaster, spiraling flames in all directions. Hello from the World Economic Forum in Geneva. Hi and welcome to the channel today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Neil McCoy Ward and firstly I want to let you know that this video today, this production, is not politically motivated. I've tried to keep it as neutral and unbiased and factual as I possibly can. But of course I appreciate all of you subscribers who have warned me against creating this video and that I understand the risks of it being taken down and censorship even though I believe that the entire video is factual. Due to the mystery shrouding the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset Initiative, I'm going to do my best today to explain these concepts as well as what is Davos, who are the players involved, the partners, the investors uh, involved in this entire initiative, what is the fourth industrial revolution and finally i'll be wrapping up with a finance aspect a finance prediction on what i think is really going on with the fiat currencies that exist in the world right now and what is happening with the us dollar and overall what this really means for you if you enjoy my videos please remember to click the like button and also get involved in a discussion below in the comments let me know what you think really is going on with this whole Great Reset initiative. With that said, let's get into it. When we look at the tremendous challenge which we have uh, in creating this uh, Great Reset. So let me just start by explaining the key player in the entire process here. This is the architect of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab. He is the founder and executive chairman of the World economic forum about the great reset this great reset mean a great reset i think the world um, which uh, we want to create with the great reset It's the final day of the World Economic Forum in Davos. So for those of you that don't know, Davos is a small town in Switzerland where the elite meet every single year to discuss global issues. The annual gathering of political and business leaders has focused on climate change. And in California, where dozens of wildfires are now raging out of control. Tonight, the Creek Fire is being called an unprecedented disaster. The wildfires burning throughout the West are especially destructive this year. Scientists say they're fueled by climate change. The fires now ripping through several states, leaving a path of immeasurable destruction. This fire exploding in Utah, others racing through the Pacific Northwest. So let me show you the World Economic Forum's promotional video to explain what is Davos. Davos is about a lot more than just money. It's about economies and how we structure them to help the poor, the wealthy, and everyone in between. It's about improving the state of the world. I mean, that's literally the motto. And proof of point, you'll see more trade unionists here than you will central bankers, more scientists than economists. Now, I do need to pull them up on this part of the video because from looking at the partnership list and the investor list, it does tend to look as though this is the 0.1% of the world's elite who is in attendance at Davos. So who pays for Davos? Well, according to the website, this is the world's most significant business entities who foot the bill. The forum offers different levels of membership and partnership. Now look at these fees. The membership fees range from 60,000 to 600,000. So let's just convert this in Swiss francs. That's 65 and a half thousand US dollars to 657 and a half thousand US dollars. So I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound as though that would just be the average person in attendance. But let's look at the partnership list then here. 
We have everyone from MasterCard to Microsoft. These are some big companies that you will know straight away. We also have in attendance some more controversial organizations such as the Soros Fund Management. So this is George Soros's company. BP, British Petroleum is another one. We also have Bayer in attendance. So BP is a energy company. Bayer, of course, uh, International Chemicals, they purchase Monsanto. So the next question is, who are the people involved in this initiative? So let's take a look at a few most famous, well-known ones now then. I think uh, an epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. Uh, and that it's pretty surprising how little preparedness there is for it. Very pleased to welcome George Soros, billionaire philanthropist and former hedge fund manager. And today we're going to discuss the difference between natural phenomenon and social phenomenon, an idea, a big idea, Mr. Soros, that has really guided you through life. Well, it's my pleasure. George Soros's uh, dinner at Davos is a bit of an institution at this event. We do, uh, he usually comes out with strong criticism of something. So George Soros really, you know, using his platform here at Davos to speak to those, you know, rich and famous who come to the World Economic Forum. Uh, we know that he's, uh, in the past, has been a major donor to the Democratic Party in the United States. He didn't say anything about which candidate he might be supporting in the Democratic primary, uh, but certainly uh, no holding back on his criticism of President Trump. Clearly, I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world, but I regard it as a purely temporary phenomenon that will disappear in 2020. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. History would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. Now, let me just interject here, not just because she looked down as she uh, made that statement, but this is Kristalina Georgieva. She is a Bulgarian economist, if you don't know who she is, and the managing director of the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund. Now, previously to this, she was the chief executive at the World Bank, and she was also the vice president of the European Commission before that. So just notice these titles for a moment. Managing director, chief executive. What many people don't realize is that the IMF and the World Bank are not charities. They are also not government organizations. These are private institutions. So this is a point that is, is never mentioned, and I don't think most people realize. And wherever the IMF and World Bank go, there is always a lot of controversy as well as mass protests against both the IMF and the World Bank who make loans to developing or struggling countries. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. All elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. It's one versus many, man versus nature, and the unfortunate foundation is long-term versus short-term. There's no doubt that the very survival of the human race requires us to act. And then we need to couple that with new initiatives to equip more people with the digital skills they'll need, not just to have a tech job, but a job that is increasingly tech enabled in almost every part of the economy. The next time someone tells us uh, that tackling climate change is either too costly or too difficult, I think we need to remind them and remind ourselves of what just is happening right now. So this is Bernard Looney. He's the CEO of BP or British Petroleum. Uh, he took over in around about February, March, I believe, of this year, 2020, and he worked his way up through the ranks of BP. So BP, this is the irony of this, were found by numerous studies to be one of the biggest contributors to climate change in the world over recent uh, decades. So I do find it quite ironic that we are receiving a lecture on climate change here from the CEO of BP and that he's somehow involved or the company somehow involved in the renewable energy aspect of this. 
The other person that I'm somewhat perplexed by is the CEO of MasterCard. So again, another financial institution uh, being given a voice here. There seems to be a lot of finance involved with this initiative, which is um, supposed to be around green sustainability, etc. So overall then, how does this affect you? Well, I've gone to the painstaking trouble of watching hours and hours of these World Economic Forum briefings and live streams and Q&A sessions so that I can actually get to the bottom of a lot of it. And I've just pulled out a few key points here that I'll now play for you. The crisis has triggered a precipitous rise in levels of unemployment. Unemployment creates strong societal risks and we have already seen the uh, impact it is having in terms of social unrest worldwide. In terms of um, impoverishment, many, many emerging countries are now facing a dramatic situation in which um, an increasing level of uh, citizens will, will face um, deep poverty issues. Uh, with again cascading effects in terms of, for example, involuntary migration, mass migration to uh, richer countries. It's been called the largest Central American migrant caravan in decades. The fourth boat of migrants that we have seen so far today. And what is apparent already from the uh, COVID pandemic is that um, it has acted as an accelerator of existing risks. So seeing that we're already uh, emerging um, a, a, few, a few years ago are now happening at a much faster pace than used to be the case. Half a million and more, as we know, are coming. And at the moment, the numbers show every sign not of declining, but of intensifying. When we talk about business closures and potential bankruptcies, do you expect this to be uh, to happen on a large scale? It's going to be pretty shocking at the end of the day when we look at it and see the number of bankruptcies and business closures that happened. A lot happened during the financial crisis. A lot more are going to happen because of the COVID-19 crisis. We know store closures are picking up already, but this is a very different phenomenon. It's going to have huge ripple effects, I would imagine, on, on uh, uh, it, the labor market, store, on the shopping malls, you know, on towns, sure. on, on budget. So you're going to see a falling out of number of stores. You're going to accelerate the trend of the poorer malls, the C and D malls closing. So you can see pretty much everything is closed. You've got one shop open on the right. And then we've got a florist open here. And it's just pigeons. So the unemployment rate getting back to the kinds of level yeah. that we're at that we were at pre pre this isn't going to happen that quickly. So that we've got to factor in. It's an animated graphic of initial jobless claims. 1990, we had a blip. We had a blip in 1987. There's 2008, and then it just goes straight up like a rocket. It goes straight up like a rocket, and that is seasonally adjusted too. Now we are at an inflection point. It's changing. The, the ideology that has prevailed over the past 15 years, which um, was predicated upon um, the government having as little rule as possible. Um, is changing radically and moving forward, you should expect um, the government to take a more um, active role in, um, in the economy and in societal issues. It's actually been proven through a ridiculous amount of studies that greater government, especially when it comes to finance, is not the best approach and that finance should really be left in the hands of the financiers to some extent with governance over those financiers so they don't take advantage of the situation. But to allow the government to be in control of the finances uh, has often not worked out well for the people. We have been very active, also actively involved in the whole question of uh, vaccines, about the vaccine itself. We don't know yet, uh, for example, is one dose sufficient 
Uh, do you need two doses? In what interval? Uh, do you have even uh, to, to be vaccinated every year? So people assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. Um, the the uh, cut which we have now um, is much too strong uh, in order not to leave traces. So this is really a test case where um, uh, for, for the capability of global cooperation. Uh, we are at a, a turning point of humankind. I think we should not underestimate uh, the historical significance um, of the situation uh, we are in. I couldn't have said that better myself. There are, of course, a number of very unusual and potentially unnatural phenomenon that is occurring right now in the world, such as this. There is a local saying in the city of Lashan. If the giant Buddha washes his feet, the city will not be able to sleep which means that if the water flows over the platform of the giant Buddha, the city of Lashan will be flooded. There is also an even more shocking saying, the world will be in chaos if the giant Buddha washes his feet. <laughs> Weeks of heavy rainfall have resulted in record high water levels and the highest level of emergency response has been activated. I went to the giant Buddha in Lashan 20 years ago and I was told by the locals that the Buddha could not have its feet washed. When saying this, they all looked terrified. Chinese official media reported that the government has been sending people to pile up sandbags overnight as the water level rises. But the Chinese netizens believe such effort was done because the government is trying to prevent the flooding of the Buddha's toes. But they could not stop this from happening. Many local people have witnessed a strange incident. They witnessed the giant Buddha statue suddenly closing its eyes overnight. The authorities had organized experts to investigate the case, but no one could explain the phenomenon. And then you have the Fourth Siddhas Revolution, which has a tremendous impact um, on business models, on society, and on the economy. Many of those technologies just look at uh, face recognition, just look at the technologies which you need for uh, tracking people. Now, Stephen, another topic being discussed at Davos is a regulation of technology, and you've been hearing about the uses of a facial recognition technology. The World Economic Forum has a series of centres around the world that focus on new technology. They're called centres of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Fourth Industrial Revolution. The 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 Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, the fourth industrial revolution. I've been discussing it with the World Economic Forum's Head of Artificial Intelligence, Kay Firth Butterfield. Yes, so as I say, the information will go to a third party and will be assessed by that third party um, and so what we want to come out of it are recommendations for either regulation or more soft versions of governance around the around the technology. So because this again is a fairly unknown topic and most people don't understand what is the fourth industrial revolution let me just explain now. So the fourth industrial revolution is a book that was written by Professor Klaus Schwab back in January of 2017, where in this book, he talks about such topics as human augmentation. He also discusses neurotechnological brain enhancements and genetic editing. And people keep saying to me, no, Neil, uh, you're talking nonsense. These things will never happen. We're decades, we're 30, 40 years away from ever having this technology. Well, take a look at this. So in terms of getting a link, like I said, it's essentially uh, you open a piece of skull, um, you remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull, uh, and then the robot inserts the electrodes. So this is our surgical robot, and if you look closely, you will see that if the electrodes are inserted very carefully, that there is no bleeding. So what you're, the, the beats you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. So we said, well, what if we do two neural link implants? So it's possible to have multiple links in your, in your head and 
have them all be sending out signals, and we're working well. Uh, and, and, and in terms of additional uh, brain reading activity, uh, when we have, um, say, um, one of our pigs on a treadmill, <laughs> pig on a treadmill. <laughs> um, it's a funny, funny concept, really. So this technology already exists today, and just look at the, the sort of acceleration from last year to what it is today. This was unveiled just last week by Elon Musk, who of course is the founder of Tesla, the car company, as well as SpaceX. So this is the Neuralink company that he also owns, and you can just see the advancements from last year to what is in existence right now today. And even with the size of this implant now, Elon actually likens this to an old-fashioned computer versus a smartphone today. So he does say that this will get smaller and smaller over time. So this is the mind map of the fourth industrial revolution directly from the World Economic Forum's website. I've not amended or changed anything on here. And you can also view this for yourself and look at some of the topics here. It is interactive, so they will go into greater detail. But there are all sorts of topics covered. Um, anything from something as simple as drones. You can see the drones here. Justice and law is another topic. Also AI and robotics. So here's their promotional video so they can show you in their own words what they mean by the fourth industrial revolution. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really gonna change. Our bodies will be so high tech we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. Okay, so let's wrap up then with the finance side on this now then. So although there isn't a lot of content or coverage on the financial side, on a reset in particular, there is this section of their mind map covering the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, titled Financial and Monetary Systems. And you can see they cover all sorts of things from entrepreneurship to blockchain. So that's quite interesting. Quantum computers, cybersecurity, AI and robotics. All of these things so far say to me a digital currency. They also have the digital economy and new value creation. That's a very key word there. So I do think this gives us somewhat of a clue as to what's happening. With the major issues that exist, with fiat currency. If you don't know, fiat currency is not money, it is something quite different. So whether you hold dollars, US dollars, Canadian dollars, you hold Australian, whether you have British pounds or euros, it doesn't matter. All of these currencies are actual fiat currencies which are not backed by anything. And the problem with a number of currencies is that they are imploding at the moment. And there is also a risk of greater inflation in the near future as a result of the new stimulus. The World Economic Forum, they also discuss the stimulus and they talk about figures such as 10 to 11 trillion in US dollars of new stimulus to come about in order to create the Great Reset. Now, although there hasn't been any mention of a currency reset or a new digital currency, Professor Schwab did have this to say quite recently. Uh, all those technologies are very much advanced now by COVID. Uh, everything will be digitalized, which can be digitalized. Adding fuel to the fire here of my suspicions, why are all of the investors into this initiative, or almost all, financial institutions? These are some of the largest banks and investment funds in the world that are investing into this. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but when I look at, say, CEOs or I look at these investment firms, some of them, not all, but some of them do not have a good track record. And the purpose of a corporation is to make profits for the shareholders. So why would a number of these banks and financiers be interested in a what's known as a green revolution? How would that profit and benefit those organizations? So I do suspect that there is an alternative motive for all of these huge uh, global elites and hedge funds and financiers meeting in one place in 2021 to discuss this great reset. But that is just my personal opinion. I have no evidence 
to support that. But with the rise of cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin as the most well-known example, and the falling value of fiat currencies, such as the US dollar, which has been losing value since its creation, I think it's only a matter of time until the central banks do have to switch to a digital currency in order to not get overtaken by something such as Bitcoin. Because if there was a crash in the fiat currencies that we use, people would have no choice but to use something else as a currency. And we already have these blockchain set up that can handle things such as Bitcoin and it can be used in very small methods of payment. So I think personally, and again, this is just my own speculation, I think the central banks are meeting and they are probably in development right now to create these, these digital currencies in order to make a switch over. So what does that mean for the currency that you have in your bank account right now? Well, no one really knows at this stage whether or not it would simply get transferred over or whether there would be a complete reset, which is also possible and likely, and that something could happen to the currency that you hold, the money as you call it, in your bank account. At this stage, we just don't know, but it is something I'm very concerned about. Which brings me on to another video which I am in production of on the collapse of the US dollar and all the world's fiat currencies because they are pegged to the US dollar and the US dollar is no longer pegged to gold. So if that's a video that you would be interested in watching, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. And if you haven't already, please click like on this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like other people to see this video, please share this video with your network. Anyone you think needs to see this video, please let them know about it. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next week.